This is an art attack. This is art attack. <laughs> Welcome to Art Attack, the show that gives your eyeballs a shock. You know, you can have an art attack using the most unusual materials and a little bit of imagination. Come and have a look at this. No, I'm not icing a cake. I am, in fact, making my own metal nameplate for my bedroom door. And do you know what? There's not a scrap of metal inside. All you need is some thin card any colour you like, and you draw your design onto the card, and then add your name. Now, the idea is that you go over each of the lines on your design with this stuff, wood adhesive. You can get it in most do-it-yourself stores or art shops. You might even have some in school. And just carefully squeeze it out there over all the lines. And when you've done that, just put it to one side to dry. Then you're going to add your metallic finish. Now, this is the bit that I really like. You add your metallic finish using these gold and silver pens. I'm going to use a gold one for my name, so... In it goes, you just slosh it on. Just make sure you cover all of it. Doesn't matter if you go over the edges, go over all the glue. The more the merrier. I'm not going to finish that, because I'll be here all day. But when you've done it, you just cut it out, and there you have it. Your own metal nameplate for your bedroom door. Then what you do? Well, it's obvious. You bolt it to your bedroom door. Now, don't worry. To bolt it onto your bedroom door, all you use are ordinary household drawing pins. Press them in like that. It's quite hard to do. Might need to get someone to help you to do that. Press them in. And then finish it off using the same gold pen, because these gold pens will actually write on anything. There you are. Bolt in. And there you have it, your own personalised metal nameplate for your bedroom door. You can, of course, design one to suit your name, Holly for Holly, Daisy for Daisy, or just use your initials. And, um, what's this? Boris the Spider. Now, I've added a bit of colour onto this artist's palette using felt-tip pens. Very nice, too. What do you think of that, then? Nice one. Nameplates. All you need is wood glue and a gold marker. Here's one I made earlier. And now, something to give your eyeballs a treat. Britain's leading rhythmic gymnast, Vifa Seifert.
we are going to start with a blank sheet of paper and we're going to create our very own original cartoon character. So, OK, where do we start? Well, I'm going to start with a nice big cheesy grin because I definitely want my character to be a happy character. There it is. Now, it's a case of building up the rest of the face now and that is where this stuff comes in, tracing paper. It is absolutely brilliant because what you do is you lay it over the drawing that you've already done and the bits that you're happy with and experiment. So, OK, let's start with some eyes then. What about nice big eyes to go with my mouth? Oh, no, it looks like the character's just about to eat me, doesn't it? Looks like some sort of wide mouth frog. OK, what about some shifty eyes for our character? Mm -hmm. Nah, a bit evil, I think. What about, let's see, I know, some cartoonist's favourite. Cross eyes. Actually, you can make a good mad rabbit out of that. I don't think we'd do a rabbit there. Too many of those around. How's about really big, wide eyes? <laughs> nah, it makes my character look nervous. What about some tiny eyes? Actually, that's not bad, you know, good contrast with the big mouth. The problem with very tiny eyes, though, is that they're not very expressive. So, to compensate for that, let's see what happens when you stick in some big eyebrows. Ah, now, that's quite good. So, what have we got so far? Well, we've got tiny eyes there and the nice big eyebrows up there. Right, I'm going to stick with that. Now, what about our character's head? Well, a lot of famous cartoon characters are actually animals, so let's see what our character looks like as a dog. A scruffy top up there, and big floppy ears, and dogs, colour. Oh, it's quite good. Let's see what it looks like as a cat. Cheeky whiskers at the side there. <laughs> now that's suiting because the big cheesy grin. Let's try something else. What about a snake. Ah, now I like that. The problem with a snake, though, is it's not, you can't get many features in and you can't get his hands in and he can't do many things. So let's try putting in a couple of accessories, maybe a, a hat on the top. Oh, well, that's good. See what that would look like on the cat. This big hat on the top. It's amazing how when you start putting things in, the character comes to life. Do you know? I really like that. I think I'm going to stick with that. We are going to stick with the cat. Next time, we'll give him a body. I'm Dean and I've done this. My name's Danny and I did this. Crazy idea. Well, we know it works with marbles, but I'm all for experimenting. Now, whatever size marbles or balls that you're using, you need a tray that's big enough to accommodate them, and you need to put a piece of paper in the bottom of the tray that fits perfectly. And then you just load in your paint, splodge it in there, nice and thick, lovely stuff. Look at that. In it goes. And another two in there. I love doing this sort of thing, you know. Oh. And then. It's just a case of rock and roll.
do use a new bin liner, you wouldn't want to use an old bag that's full of rubbish. Speaking of old bags that are full of rubbish. <laughs> sad. This is a simple frame that I cut out of using a square piece of paper. But why do we use frames? Well, they not only tidy up a picture and make it look good, but they draw our eyes into the picture and focus our attention on the subject. But there are other things that frames can be used for. How's about rescue a picture? Now here's a picture that I've done, and I don't actually like it. Well, I don't like bits of it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to scan it with my frame. There it is my homemade frame, that's quite nice within there. And that's good as well. So there is a picture within a picture. Now I think I've rescued this picture because what I'll do is I'll cut that out and frame it and throw the rest away. Well actually here's another one I completely messed up. I like this one but I messed it up totally by spilling some red ink on it. So bring in the good old homemade frame there, scan the picture, looking all the time for a picture within the picture in fact, this is a technique that photographers use. And there it is. That looks quite nice there. I'll cut that out and save it. How's about that? Two pictures rescued. Handy things, frames. Uh. That was so embarrassing. One red sweet. Two red sweets. Promise you won't laugh. See you next week. <laughs>